What's the word, y'all? I read back, man. Game number three was, was good. You know, as a neutral fan, I'm enjoying this NBA final so far. We got a couple different stretches throughout this one. It was a lot of green for sure. A lot of runs by the Boston Celtics. Jay LeBron comes out initially setting the tempo with 17 points in the first quarter. And in perfect Jalen Brown's fashion, he ended with 27. <laughs> he ended with 27. Jalen Brown, you know, he, he can score in bunches. And then he got, not go cold because he still ended up 9 for 16. But he just be... At that point, he's like, you know what? I did my part. Let me go clamp up. And there were a lot of possessions in this game where it's like one-on-one -on -one defense with him and Wiggs, one-on-one -on -one defense between him and Steph Curry, and he clamped up. He understood that his job was to set the momentum and then play some defense. And then, you know, it's all green for the majority of it, and then we get to the third quarter. I don't know what the hell be happening in the Boston Celtics locker room, but third quarters are not in their favor. We get to the third quarter in the avalanche that is the Golden State Warriors ramp up. Steph Curry's doing his thing. They're still dropping on the pick and roll, and Steph Curry's hitting the shots. And then we get to the fourth quarter. And the second time in these three games, I guess we can call it a collapse by the Golden State Warriors. 11 points in a fourth quarter is dreadful. And we're going to talk about all of those things. But before we do, let me talk to you about my sponsor, Prize Picks. Listen, man, there's only a couple more games left of the NBA season. There might just be two. I Listen, I don't really know. Hit that link in the description to download the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players like there might just be two games left for the NBA season I don't really know but that is okay because this is deeper than basketball here you got the MLB WNBA PGA you got tennis you got esports there's so many things you can make an entry on the way this works you pick some of your favorite athletes you pick a statistic like assists and you decide whether you believe that athlete is going to go over or under on their assists today I made an entry I'm admit. I did not succeed because I thought Jordan Poole was going to give us a better performance, but he did not. It actually was very hard to watch. His threes were at 1.5, and he ended with one. So I did not win my entry today, but I'm back at it for game number four, and you can be too. Hit that link in the description to download Prize Picks. Use code Kenny and uh, get into it. I think the worst thing about all of this, if you're a Warriors fan, it's not the fact that you lost this game because it's it's basketball. It's a seven-game series. Being down 2-1 ain't as bad as, you know, it, it could have been worse, right? The worst thing about it is in the last couple minutes of this game, um, Steph curves in the bottom of a dog pile like somebody just had a game when a shot and he was just jumping on top of each other and he tweaked his ankle a little bit you know Al Horford got on top of it and he you know he walked around he limped around and there's not that big of a gap between game one and game two there's like three game three days between game two and game three there's like three days and now the next game is like in a couple nights bro so it's not a ton of time for Steph Curry I am hoping again as a neutral fan that he is okay because he's been a pleasure to watch he's been dominating through three games and of course y'all know if bro is injured Series. You feel me? If bro was injured, series. You don't win without Steph Curry and his fastest. All right. So there are a lot of things to talk about, man. And I'm going to start off on the place that I hate talking. I know I, I it was the title of my video last, but you know, clicks. And I was successful in getting those clicks. <laughs> um, refereeing, right? Refereeing was not good in this game. But I will not go out and say it was Celtics in the refs versus the Warriors or vice versa. What I have noticed is that the neutral fan, when we are watching this game, we can acknowledge when the refereeing is bad. But one thing we will see is that it don't look like it's one way or another. That's, that's the, that was my interpretation of today's games. Maybe you disagree, but it didn't feel like that it was Celtics and refs versus Warriors, and that's why the Warriors lost. But in my mentions, every single night, every single time somebody's favorite team loses, it's, damn, the refs were against us today, when in reality, I think they're just bad. <laughs> they're just bad. They're going to miss calls. They're going to call phantom calls. It's just the reality of these things. And the fact that Steph Curry was in foul trouble, the fact that Wiggins was in foul trouble, the fact that Draymond Green fouled out is not entirely on the referees. Yeah, maybe Steph Curry got one more foul than he deserved, but still, that's just the game of basketball. It's just the way it is. The referee was not good. But that's not the reason why the Golden State Warriors lost this game because when we got to that fourth quarter, and we're going to talk more than just the fourth quarter because we had a whole 48 minutes worth of basketball. When we got to that fourth quarter, uh, I'm not, again, I say this all the time when I'm, when I'm talking about coaches, I will never be able to understand the game of basketball on the level that is Steve Kerr. The man has a bunch of championships as a player, got a bunch of player uh, championships as a coach. He is way more knowledgeable in the game of basketball than I am. But as an outsider, when I'm watching this fourth quarter and watching Robert Williams and Grant Williams go out there and get every single offensive rebound and turn that to open Marcus Smart 3 or turn that to a Jason Tatum drive to the basket, I can't help but to look at Kevon Looney who plays sub-20 minutes and be like, why is he not out there? Especially, I'm sorry, I'm getting my hair done later t t uh, tomorrow morning, so it's all over the place. Especially 
when the guy that's supposed to be the anchor, the new five in this small ball lineup, Draymond Green, is playing as bad as he did today. We get to the fourth quarter. The ball is being thrown around like they don't know what basketball is. Turnover after turnover after turnover for the Golden State Warriors, trying to throw it up with three three seconds into the 24 seconds. That's a turnover. And then now the Boston Celtics have four straight possessions because they're getting all the offensive rebounds. We talked about the end of game two that I was hoping that Robert Williams is okay. And in reality, he's not, but you saw bits and pieces of the impact that was him. He was dominant in the whatever minutes he got today. And a lot of that is because it's like Otto Porter, who is Otto Porter, Gary Payton the second, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond. He's killing the glass. And then he even got to the point where Ime Udoka's like, I'm kind of digging this offensive rebound thing. Big Al, get back in the game. And now we got four or five lobs because they're getting second chance points. I don't know how you could go four minutes with this small lineup for the Warriors and see the same four minutes that I saw and be like, Kevon Looney don't need to play right now. I believe that Kevon Looney's minutes should be close to mirrored with Robert Williams at the bare minimum because the man Kevon Looney damn near single-handedly won them two series by him rebounding the ball. And second chance points is one of the main reasons why they lost today's game. So it was, just, it was just weird to me to see Kevon Looney twiddling his thumbs on the sideline when the other team is running big and getting the rebounds. And listen, Draymond, I, I don't even know what else I can really say about Dre. This was another one of the worst um, games that I've seen for him. And he's always been a dude that, like, the count of stacks never tell the full story of Draymond Green's impact. He was a net negative tonight. And there's not, there has not been a ton of times in Draymond's career as far as when he blossomed into like a, a all-star caliber player where I could say that when it was like big time games. He was a legitimate net negative. That's hard. That's hard. It was hard to watch him go out there and not do nothing but talk to the referees about a missed call or the fact that he didn't foul somebody. Draymond, bro. You are fouling, G. Even, even if you didn't foul this possession, you you closed last somebody two possessions ago and you didn't get called for it. So maybe it's okay that you get this foul. Draymond has to be more composed. I think that he let the crowd get into his head in the bigger moments. And I don't know what the hell happens on this podcast tonight. I'm actually very curious to see everything that is said in this one because he had a terrible performance. And in this game where you get Steph Curry again continuing his dominance um, with him ending up with 31 points and you get Klay Thompson having his first great game of the finals, they needed more from you. And more from Draymond Green don't necessarily mean he needs to score 15 points. It's like, be better. This might have been the worst defensive game they've had. Marcus Smart is sneaking past his defenders for, like, ducking layups and stuff. That's not the Warriors basketball that got them to this point. And if they want a chance to win this series, they got to step it up. Because in this game, uh, uh, Jason Tatum put it together. At the end of game number two, I said, if we can get the, the playmaking that we got in game one of Jason Tatum and the tough shot making that we got in game two of Jason Tatum in one game, it's going to be hard to win that game if you're the opposing team. And we got that. This is about as composed I've seen Jason Tatum in a minute. Well, I guess not really because in game number one, he was doing this. He was drawing in all of the defense and kicking it out to his shooters and his shooters were making shots magnificently. Magnificently. And then... From one of the few times in this series, they headhunted and successfully did it. Steph Curry was caught on the island. And for the most part of the series, for the vast majority of the series, I would say Steph Curry has been a, a positive defender. He's held his own once he did get the switches. But today, with him being in foul trouble, it's harder to defend when you're in foul trouble, objectively. Him, Wiggs, Draymond can't give the best version of themselves when they're in foul trouble. But I'm not about to sit here and watch all the fouls that they were given. I would assume that majority of the fouls that they were credited to were deserving. So when me seeing them in foul trouble was one of the reasons why they couldn't defend, I'm not blaming the referees, especially when you get the play with Steph Curry coming down court and you put his hand in the cookie jar on Marcus Smart. I didn't think that was a shooting foul, but damn sure it was a reach-in foul at the bare minimum. Things like that. And he got in foul trouble very, very early on. And you can't defend at your best potential when you have to think about the fact that, oh, I got four fouls, and I'm also the superstar player of this team. I can't afford five in the third quarter. So Jason Tatum trying to get by me, got to let him do his thing, and we just got to live with it. And that's the way they played this entire second half. 
And when you put that with the offensive rebounding, you put that with the good level of defense from the Boston Celtics, this was a recipe for the Celtics to win basketball games. And this was a complete flip of the switch from what we saw in game number two, where in game number two, it just felt like the physicality that the Warriors were throwing at the Boston Celtics were too much. And this one, it was the flip side. You got the physicality from the Boston Celtics. You got the hustle from the Boston Celtics. And you did not see that with the Warriors. You know, we, we talked about very early on that one of the main things that's going to determine this entire series is the turnover battle. And in this one, turnovers to the Golden State Warriors, 16. Turnovers to the Boston Celtics, 12. And then when you think about second chance points, you think about points off turnovers, that is the reason why you lose this game, man. And again, you go into the fourth quarter with all of this momentum and then it just gets cut off, man. I'm waiting for them to upload the play-by-play. -play. Like I said, the game literally just ended. So they have, they uploaded it. Hey, shout out to the NBA, man. Shout out to the NBA because they fast with it. Let me go find some clips that I want to talk about. I think that the first foul is the one with the iffiest, you know. Let me hit that mute because that's how the NBA catch you. This first foul is the one that has the iffiest. He does put a little bit of body on Jalen right here and he gets called for that foul. But I think that's probably a continuation and you don't call that and just let the ball play. But other than that, I think his third foul may be somewhat questionable, but it's it's just like such bang-bang plays in most cases. If I'm the Warriors, the changes I make um, in preparation for game number four, get Kevon Looney a little bit more burn. I didn't feel like when I was watching Kevon Looney out there that he was a liability on either side of the floor. He can't be that much of a liability offensively than Draymond Green, you know what I'm saying? So play Draymond or play Kevon Looney a little bit more. I would love to see more Gary Payton. I think game number two, he was great. And in this one, we barely got to see him. Um, maybe less Jordan Poole and more Otto Porter, give some more big wings that could potentially just be out there defensively, and let Steph Curry rock, man. The Celtics fans, y'all should be on very, very high because you defend at home court at the bare minimum. Who knows what happens in game number four? It is a must win, in my personal opinion, for the Warriors because I can't see a world where the Celtics go up 3-1 and then lose the series. Of course, it's possible. But it's I just I've seen the way this team has competed for the past couple months, and I just can't see them getting one out of three. You know, it's not a team that loses back to back games. That's true to, to, to this day. So I don't really know how it's going. Um, again, as a neutral fan, it's been a lot of fun for me. And I'm excited that we don't have to wait five days for game number four. We can just get in and talk about some more hoops. Appreciate y'all.